you know, these are actually these are based on actual experiences, reported sightings. I did not know that. Yeah, they are. This one right here is really cool. This one's scary. <laughs> Very scary. Cartoon UFOs, definitely. Yep. Hey, it's time for Metaphysical Matters. All righty then. Hey, guess what we're going to be talking about today? Not UFOs. <laughs> We cannot we never talk about that. We cannot get away from it. There's been so much cool UFO stuff that's come out uh, since we last talked. But this is Metaphysical Matters with Angela Moore. I'm Kim Clark, and we're so happy to be back after the Thanksgiving break. Did you have a good one? I did. Turkey is tough as it could be, but the yams was super good. So, so everybody ate yams? Yes, I would eat yams daily if I could. The way I make them, because I make them really good. If I do say so myself. And the turkey was tasty, but man, love, I don't know what happened. Hey, everybody. Thank you, Julie. Um, we went to, you know, Ellen's mom is in a um, retirement uh, village, I guess. I don't know what to call it. It's one of those nicer places up in Hendersonville. It's something she planned to do a while back. And then once Ellen's dad passed away, she went ahead and um, moved in. But anyway, so we went there and ate in their dining room with... Uh, Ellen's mom and some of the other older ladies there that she kind of pals around with. And you know what? We had a, we had a really good time. Good. I really enjoyed it. Good. I'm glad you didn't come here because I <laughs> to fed you that bad turkey. <laughs> I mean, like I said, it was flavorful, but. So you uh, had sent some, I'm sure, I'm sure all you Facebook uh, friends of Angela saw um, all of the pictures you were sending out of Dylan because he was helping prepare the meal. Oh uh, yeah. So he really is a chef in the making. He? he is. He actually told me yesterday, he says, I want to go take home Mac when I get to high school. Home Mac. And I thought, well, that's great. Yeah, I did too. Cause I thought at first he meant he was wanting to, to go to culinary school, which we had talked about because there actually is a good one I've heard over in Asheville. But uh, he says, I mean, in high school, like I want to take it next year. Of course, he's only going to be in middle school next year, but he thought maybe that was something they offered in middle school. But yeah, but Lord have mercy. I got to teach that boy a few things. I let him make the deviled eggs on its own. And cause that's like my thing. That's how you know it's a holiday. If there's deviled eggs, if there's no deviled eggs, there's Things no Things you, you don't eat any other time. So anyway, that and corn on the cob. So anyway, that's how I know it possibly yams. So they look so good, and I'm so excited all by myself, and I took one big old bite, and it's like I thought I was going to die. For some reason, he decided it'd be a good idea to add sugar. <laughs> and he, I looked at his face, and it's like he was looking so kind of hurt and hopeful and sad. And I said, I could not hurt his feelings. I could not. But at some time, I couldn't let it go. So did you put sugar in this? Yeah, did you just a little? This is shit right here. And of course, everybody, you know, Tony, my ex-husband always joins us for holidays. And my current husband, they're like, oh, it's it's good. You know, it, it's, it's, it makes it better. <laughs> it's like, I'm about to die. I said, well, it's all right to try things, you know. But he went over to his grandma, the other grandma's later. I made some more deviled eggs for myself. <laughs> I had to, I had to have the devil dead fix, but Lordy, I got him talked out of that experimenting business at least for right now. We're speaking of experimenting, he must have been doing some kind of crazy experiment because you found a pair of, of his underwear in the freezer. No, oh, I don't know. I I don't even know. I don't ask. You see, when I first when we were first getting settled, she found a pair of his underwear over here on the shelf where the cat food is. That still hasn't been explained. But then she told me that she'd also found a underwear in the freezer. Yeah, I did. I don't know. I don't question the things the boy does anymore. I just don't. I, I didn't tell you. I've told the people on here. It's like, you know, he's all boy. Just so you know, whatever that means, he's all boy. At the same time, he's, well, they call him creative. <laughs> and it's like, I was, clean, I was cleaning out my closet, getting rid of all my old clothes, shoes, stuff that I've not worn in 20 years. And he comes prancing, is the only word, into the room. And he's wearing my black heels. He had, he was wearing his shorts underwear. He had a belt wrapped around a, a metal belt thingy around here. He had another like this weird looking uh, strappy belt around here as a as a as a scarf. I know he was wearing a hat, but I don't remember. Was it his fez? It might have been his fez because he does have a fez. Okay, and my pocketbook, an old pocketbook, around his shoulder, and he comes in and he's talking like this honey child here i am honey child it was time for dinner it's time for us to eat or something like, oh my god and then he calls everybody when he does this jennifer <laughs> jennifer one jennifer two jennifer five. i don't know why he calls everybody jennifer and he calls himself 
Daddy, come here and tell your daddy what you need to Jennifer. Don't make me mad, Jennifer. He's crazy. I mean, he's sort of, I've been, like, I don't know. Maybe he needs commitment. I don't I know. I think he's just not from around here. <laughs> he's not. And that's, you know, no, he's little, real little before he'd come to live with us. So that means he was like kindergarten, pre-kindergarten. He swears uh, at the time, he doesn't remember it now, that he looked out the window and there was a flying saucer, he said at the time, out in his yard. And it was dark. And he was just telling us like it was a normal thing you do. And I don't know why. There was no reason for a little child to just word out that. So I don't know what that was about. Hmm. Okay. Let's get down to metaphysical business, shall we? We got a bunch of good folks with us. Um, have you noticed a theme among your clients that you've seen in the last I've been seeing weeks? people born on or near July 22nd, oddly enough. And has been a lot more focused on the, um, um, I'm looking for the right word, um, spiritual activity. People who have uh, want to come to ask about people who have passed on. Hmm. And um, it's, it's funny how that guy kind of goes in bunches. And it's it's been, um, I feel like I've been kind of, um, I don't know, on lately and that makes me happy when i feel like i've done my job and people feel happy and and uh i've done i hope they, they always feel happy and hopefully i always do my job but it feels yes. like lately it's just been different somehow i can't explain it but that does take a whole lot of energy and i'm not complaining but when you do that kind of work when you feel um or see somebody or it's people in spirit and they want to leave a message for somebody. It does take a lot of energy. So it's also kind of tiring. And to be honest, I'm already looking forward to, to Christmas break. If I play my cards right, I might get two or three days off. Well, okay. I hope you do. I hope I do. I, I feel like I deserve some time off. Oh my God. Of course you do. Well, you know, we start out with a little teaser with these vintage uh, UFO comic books that I picked up at Comic-Con a few weeks ago. I'm the only old lady at Comic-Con who's buying comic books for myself, not for a grandchild. I think that's great. Yeah, I just, I pass as myself off as somebody's buying for somebody else, but I get them for myself. Um, but there have been uh, so many UFO sightings. Um, and I guess the big kahuna was the Tuesday before Thanksgiving when that slow moving blob appeared over dc and had uh the capitol building and the white house on lockdown for 45 minutes why are they still not talking about that well i actually read a more recent article today in preparation for coming okay, here okay and it was just a bunch of gobbledygook about a perfect storm of technical difficulties mm -hmm. and this and that oh. what do you get about that is it ufo okay oh my god yes it was it was i'm sorry but i'm just telling you flat out because i with the technology and everything that we have it was either that or some uh you know maybe um russian kind of thingy and i don't know or you know what i'm trying to say good lord adversarial thing that was sent and i don't think they have that kind of technology so i don't think that's what it was I feel that's what it was i do feel it was them and i feel like you know they did this in the 50s over the washington they flew yeah. over they tried to say it was a temperature inversion thing, but people who actually do know about those stuff said, no, it weren't. And I don't believe they are telling the truth that it was, in fact, what everybody says that it was when it happened, which is a fleet flew over. I think this is a large, probably, mothership, and I think that they're probably flying over all the time. But I think this time they wanted to be noticed. You know, they have been seen, and I told you this last time, and I, by the way, people, I apologize if I was really low on our last uh, uh, metaphysical matters um, because I just didn't feel real good that day for some reason. Yeah, so, I apologize after we finished. I said I felt like I did all the talking. She had to. You had to because I just did not have a lot of energy. But anyway, you know what? We're human. We do what we do. Hopefully you enjoyed it anyway. Was so anyway, mothership. About? I think it was. I believe there's been uh, not only South Carolina, North Carolina, Utah, and maybe, I want to say California. I have no idea why I want to say that because I didn't read that. But I feel like they are really coming through more. And all, they're always in other countries. But, you know, I stick to the country that I'm in. I think they are saying, look at me. Look at me. Well, I was just interested that you said mothership just now because one of the articles you sent me this week was about UFO sightings skyrocketing in Connecticut, among many other uh, states and one of the sightings there they've had 
um, almost 100 this year. It looks like they're going to hit 100 if things continue apace before the end of the year. But one um, person who saw uh, some of the phenomena in Farmington, Connecticut, said they saw a big mothership that emitted two smaller crafts, and they're all changing colors. And there's several people there watching these crafts move around each other in the sky. But also in Connecticut, um, just white lights with uh, smaller lights around them, bright enough to illuminate a dark road, a ball of light moving at incredible speeds, making right turns, and just crazy stuff. But that's just in Connecticut. And we've had, I noticed that one of your clients shared via Facebook, I think, that we've had 143 reported UFO sightings in North Carolina this year. Now, how many weren't reported? There you go. Yeah. Because, so you know, I think I told you before, Dusty uh, was coming home from somewhere not too long ago, and he saw one out, was it out where towards where you live, wasn't it? Out in Nick's Creek or somewhere. I don't remember. So, yeah. If you told me, I forgot about it. Yeah, I think it was Nick's Creek coming back towards town from that. Yes, I did tell you because you said, oh, my God, that's where I live, and I didn't even think about the time that it was out there in that general area. So, you know, he was by himself, and, you know, it's, he, Dusty would, would be happy to tell the public. He don't care what anybody thinks about anything. But um, – I don't, I don't know that he did. He might have forgot about it again. I honestly think that he, I think he's an abductee. I've come to that conclusion. It would explain a lot too. You explain his, um, how he's so anxious. A lot of anxiety and also just a lot of what he sees and feels. Yeah. And I think my daughter was because of that. I told you, she saw that coming in. She's on the phone. She sees a white light coming at her. And next thing she knows, she's in her bed. And, um, you know, well then, Sometimes I think about James and me. And one time, it was like a couple of weeks ago. God, I'm getting weirder and weirder. You know why? I don't care no more. I'm old. What do I care? We were we woke up. Mill not nothing's wrong. We just woke up the same time. He gets up and just decides to come in the kitchen to get something to eat after just suddenly waking up. I had to, of course, go to one of my many, many trips to the restroom. But as I'm going, it was like I'm thinking, isn't it odd that we both woke up at the same time? And I wonder if we got alien abducted, I wonder what it would feel like. And I thought, well, surely I'd feel, you know, weird or have a strange sensation or something. I didn't feel anything. I just felt like I just woke up sudden, like wide awake. But yet that thought came to my mind, like, I wonder, I don't know, it's just a weird thought. And I've thought about it since. And I've been having crazy dreams. And there's a strange man in all of them. And I don't remember him well. And he doesn't talk. He's not even familiar. And he has a different role. And I don't even know what that's about. But I think, hey, Ellen from Atlanta. And also, Sharon Love, I'm so glad you made it today. Um, I just, I don't know. I just feel like there's stuff going on. And nobody's telling me what it is with me. Anyway. Well, you also shared um, a, an article about UFO sightings in South Carolina. There was a big one just a day or two ago of the comet looking thing that was stationary in the sky. Mm -hmm. And this sighting was really cool because the, when, the, when the observer was there and he got some videos online, if you just Google uh, UFO in South Carolina, you'll probably see it. Uh, and so he got some video and it looks to be fairly stationary and it looks like there's something inside of the cone of it. But then there's, a, um, there's an airplane that passes at the same time, and the airplane passes from his point of view, passes behind the UFO rather in front rather than in front of it, which is makes you go, hmm. So it was closer than the plane. You know what is exactly this is about? That was that was really. Did you get wild. the one I sent with that lady? Uh, forgot her name. Uh, she notes who she is uh, texted or posted about the uh, ancient alien thing where it's like yeah, that bubble. Yeah, but you sent me that uh, as a screen capture from Facebook, and it was yeah. on my computer about this big, <laughs> so I couldn't print it out or anything that would be But useful. you did see, I, I thought that was it. just almost crazy how that shape. Well, how, yeah, how can they see that? Um, go to, I post it, go to my page and scroll down. Okay, all right. Okay. Yeah, because it really did. The, the video that this guy took in South Carolina really matched up with what she shared, which was some um, really old, old, um, I don't know if I'd call them ancient, but old renderings of some kind of flying object. It was pretty wild. Um, also, I think somebody 
on Facebook was talking about seeing um, UFOs in Nebo. Did you see that it was on your Facebook page? I don't remember what I read there, but you know, that just triggered her memory years ago. And I went to this before internet stuff to the library and actually dug through because I had remembered the headlines that day because it involved somebody I know about a machine and this, that, and the other. So I knew which newspaper article I was looking for and I found it and I loaned it to somebody. Why did I do that? Because I'll never saw it again, of course. But it was um, about this lady in Nebo who saw not only, you know, a, a alien vessel, but she could see the people in it, like there was, or the beings in it, the little light things. And like I said, I put in the McDonald News and I wish I could find that again. And how long ago has it been? It's been a long time, Kim. It's probably been 30 years ago. But, you know, like I said, it stuck in my mind and um, it, they, they vowed and declared it happened and there was no reason these were not people that, as far as I know, would just go make up something like that. We got a lot of interesting comments coming through. Angie says she's been seeing a lot of shooting stars recently, which is really interesting. And a comment for another comment now from another solar system. Three things now from another solar system that's coming into ours. I thought that was pretty intriguing too. Mm -hmm. Look what look at this comment, um, Gabrielle Israel. Last night a deer ran through the through the front of my car. When I say through, I mean through it. Dematerialized right through it. I saw it. Now I'm trying to convince myself it didn't happen. I think that's probably another example of how our reality is just shifting like crazy. I do think that sometimes when we have things disappear or, you know, sudden we see somebody and we don't, or and that is bizarre and interesting uh, comment there. I love that. That instead of, you know, sometimes instead of ghostly things, it is literally a dimension that is kind of, um, overlapping another or little portals oh my god you know one time i was going along kim was you, was i with you that day i don't know who i was with i was in the vehicle with somebody <laughs> i don't know and i looked out in the distance and i saw what looked like okay like if you ever see a fire in paper and then around the paper where the fire was it's got black edges right right it was like out there <clears throat> in the in the future out there in the future out there in the front of the car several carlets ahead it was like black uh edge and thin air and bright bright yellow in the middle like a fire i think i was with this girl diane Anyway, I screamed because I thought detached retina. <laughs> I don't even know what she that is. She always goes to the medical dictionary. I, I have no idea what that even is. I'm, I'm guessing it might be painful. <laughs> so automatically, I slap myself in the eyes because, you know, I'm feeling like, oh, my God. And I take them down, and I actually saw it again, but it had moved over. I've never seen anything like that before or since. So I'm just remembering this. I wow. think that was some sort of a portal then. And I think maybe these things happen, and we don't see them. And maybe they're these little openings or little um universes colliding maybe in the microscopic way that allow us to see through bend time maybe bend time a little bit do you remember uh this has been a long time ago you told me about this but you were going down the five as we call it the five lane here in marion right about where roses is now and suddenly you were in what looked like a prehistoric setting you remember oh yeah we were coming back up the five lane and uh going uh south okay and for you people that live around here it's where the old major station m m's grocery before you get to m m's it was right before that for the steakhouse the new dollar store is going so anyway we're going <laughs> i didn't know the dollar store is going there yeah the general dollar store is let's moving. talk about that instead beside <laughs> sharon's is moving out to the old steakhouse okay so anyway they're going to tear it down rebuild one but anyway, we were coming up through there, and it's like all of a sudden, and I was seeing through it, so I knew it wasn't like, I, it wasn't like everything disappeared. It was like everything was still there, but I was also seeing, well, actually, I wasn't seeing through it, but it was not, it was fuzzy, but clear. I can, you know, get just figure it out. And it was like plants and stuff, but not like what you see now. It was not like the Appalachian forest that I live in or near, okay? It wasn't like that. It looked tropical. And it was a lot of foliage. It was like not trees so much as plants. Again, tropical feeling. It was not here. It was not here at all. And I felt like it was like I was back in time, like way, like dinosaur time or something. And it was really strong. 
And not only did I see that, and I felt like it was in the past, but I had this vision, this idea that to get to the past that far back, instead of two ways, you go back a million years, and there it is, or you just go forward just a little bit, and there it is. Like the shortcut to the past was to go straight ahead. I don't know what that means either. But that happened, and wow, it was very cool. powerful. And I feel like somehow that time maybe is a circle in a way that I don't understand. And don't don't uh, pretend to. I'm just sharing with you. This happened. Do what you want with that. I'll tell you one hey, thing that, that Ellen and I have been noticing is, uh, you know, we've talked before about the Mandela effect or Mandela effects where we all remember something being a certain way, and then you go back and look again, and it's different. And everybody's like, oh, it's always been that way. Mm -hmm. Um Anyway, we've been noticing many Mandela effects, like as in tiny ones, like like within your day, a lot. Like, okay, the address I'm going to is 154, you know, South Broad Street. Let me look again, 155 South Broad Street. Just little switches like that. Yeah, I've seen some stuff like that lately too, something that, you know, like I picked up maybe a homework sheet and it was something and I'll go back and pick it up and it's something else and I'm like, yeah. Looking. Yeah, it's it's I, I don't know what's going on with that, but I think that well this just in. <laughs> this just in. Okay. I'm being told that think of where we are like a quilt on a bed and it's like it's being done like this to shake out the stuff. It's not leaving the bed, it still belongs on the bed, but it's <laughs> kind of gotten in disarray and needs to be done like that and smooth. And that's what's happening. Take that or leave it or analyze it any way you want to. That's what I'm getting. Huh. Okay. That's very interesting. I've also noticed recently and heard other people talking about this very intense deja vu. Have you sensed this? And sometimes deja vu within deja vu within deja vu. Like, oh, wow. This was I was talking today okay. about having deja vu. That's where you mentioned it. I just have to say, Shana, somebody uh, tapping on the head at near the steakhouse. I actually saw a man get run over out there uh, about 30. God, it's so I'm so old. All these numbers are getting so big. It's probably been about 30 years ago. Maybe, no, yeah, about 30 years ago. That's about exactly what it was. This guy was across his dark, and I was standing in that little motel out there because I was having a dispute with my uh, ex-husband at that time, and I left and went spending night in the motel. And um, I was outside. It's been about 35 years ago, about 35 years ago. Anyway, this guy just took off across the road and he was struck, I think, by a motorcycle. Wow. I believe he was killed. And it makes me wonder about that because I never hadn't been thinking about that in years and years and years. And then I see that and I suddenly remember that guy. So I wonder if maybe there's imprint in time, maybe there where that happened. I'm not saying his spirit is there, but maybe there's an imprint in time there. Um, I just wanted to jump back real quickly. Tina was asking, what's the Mandela effect? I'm sorry. We just kind of went over that really fast. You have to be educated, Tina, before you can watch our show. <laughs> um, it's named after Nelson and Mandela because when people first noticed this phenomenon, they, they were noticing that some people remember Mandela dying in prison. Other people remember that he was freed and went on to, you know, to become the president of South uh, Africa. And so that they named it the Mandela effect because it seemed like a timeline split there. And the, the other thing is the Bernstein bears. Now, if you look up the Bernstein bears and uh, everybody remembers it as the Bernstein bears, but now it's Baron Berenstein. It's like there's an extra syllable in there. What it gets me is, do you remember the monopoly man? You know, the little monopoly. That's a good man. one. He has a monocle. I know. Yes. He, has, he doesn't. He does not have a monocle, but most people will remember him having a monocle. Yes. So that's the Mandela effect. A movie. A movie. There's a movie with um, that guy, that comedian, uh, nice, the G plays a genie. Um, uh, he's, um, oh gosh, I can't remember his name. He's a, a black man. He um, He's very nice, uh, clean humor. Oh my God, I can't think of his name now, but y'all know who I'm talking about. People remember the movie that he was in where he played a genie not a genie sh sh not shazam oh my god what is wrong with me the oh somebody's gonna pop up here for crying out loud it's the movie where there was uh jason and the U ulysses ulysses all that stuff or he was a genie i don't remember now anyway i saw that movie 
I know I saw the movie, even though I'm having trouble remembering anything about it. As we don't I believe you saw that movie. I know I saw the movie. Well, evidently, I did not see that movie because that movie does not exist. However, I'm not alone. There are many, many people who will swear to you that he was in that movie, that he made a movie, like I said, and they say, oh, no, no, it was Will Smith and all this. No, it wasn't. That's not the same movie. It's not. This was way before then when this guy was popular because he's probably in his 50s now. And this was like when he was young. Anyway. Well, uh, something that the most recent one that we noticed was Cliff Bars. You guys, any of y'all buy Cliff Bars? Kind of a one step up from a candy bar. It's supposed to be a little bit healthier. Um, I swear it was C-L-I-F-F, -F, Cliff Bars, until I went back to the store and I'm there C-L-I-F Bars. See, I mean, and that, well, the thing is, okay, maybe they change the label, but then you do research. No, it's never changed. But, you know, it just, it that, the Mandela effect, I tell you, I, like everything else, Kim, I think things go in waves. It's like, like, for example, I will see all these people born around July 22nd. And now, you know, I think it's the same thing. I just put my feet up, people, in case you're wondering why I'm not, I'm not trying to cuddle up to Kim here. It's just if I don't have my arm here, I'm going to fall over. I kind of like it when you do that because it covers up my hideous arm. Oh, good grief. Yeah, d d don't look at it. Just because I said that, people, does not mean you get to look at it. You might as well just get a spotlight now. <laughs> and then I put that over there, and it's like, my God, am I a lady wrestler or what? But, you know, uh, Karen... Uh, Commented just a couple Sinbad, minutes. Sinbad, thank you. Sinbad. Thank you, friend Noel. Sinbad. Didn't happen. That's wild. Well, Karen mentioned a while ago um, that she thought that whenever those little switches seem to happen, that she wonders if time travelers have kind of changed something. Which they may have. There may be. I've always, you know, there could be like so many realities and we're just skipping realities. And, you know, Angela from that reality, maybe switching places for a minute with me where that Sinbad did, maybe did happen or something. Only I'm not alone. There's a lot of people, like I said, that have these um, these memories of one thing than the other. Um, oh, by the way, speaking of time, um, shifting timelines, if you're interested, uh, I'm always like three years behind since I don't watch television. I have to catch up with everything online. But there's a TV show that came out in 2016. They only did one season, but they wrapped it up. It's really cool. It's called Frequency. It was a network show. It was on C the CW. And that's the whole premise is this detective and her father, they get, they uh, find a way to communicate across time and they start trying to change that's things. a movie that I sent to you. Is it based on that movie? Yeah. Okay. That is, if you people that's like really cool. movies about time travel and you like that guy that played in it, his name, I can't Sinbad. remember. Sinbad. No, it's not. Sin <laughs> oh my God. What I is these people? I, it's Den and Dennis Quaid in the Quaid. Movie. Thank you. I'm going to watch the movie now that I saw that oh, series. I thought you watched it. Maybe I told you watched it maybe years ago. I did not watch that. Oh, God, you cheated yourself. It is a, I'm going to watch I it I love now. that movie. As a matter of fact, I feel like I need to stop doing this show and just go watch it right now. <laughs> it's a great movie about time travel, and, and uh, but it's, it's, and, it's a mystery. And they're trying to, they're tweaking things from each side of this timeline to try to catch this killer, and they change something, and then something else happens here. It's really a neat way to explore. It is. You will, if you like anything to time travel, you need to do it. Okay. Somebody said we are future time changers. Maybe we are. Maybe we changed it. I thought I need to go back in time and change my entire life. I've often thought about that, and I talked. But this I timeline you, will continue to, to exist. I want to switch lives with another Angela. I've already told you. I can't stand the thought of another Angela having a worse life than me. And then I'm thinking, man, if this is the best it gets. I just don't know. I, I liked it when you told us that time that you, in one timeline you think Angela, there's Angela on death row. <laughs> Angela on death row, I worry about. And then sometimes I think Angela the president. And I think, you know, the, the, it would not work out well for me. I'd get assassinated, I'm sure. Okay. Um, let's uh, leave that now. And you wanted to share a, a story that's from right here in McDowell County about okay. a swamp critter. Oh. <laughs> Well, we all know about that swamp beast down there in Bishopville, South Carolina. Mm -hmm. And like we have uh, Bigfoot as our town mascot. They actually have their, it's a swamp monster, which it comes out and messes with people's cars. I think he like gnaws on the fenders or something. But I think we got one here. I, I think we got one here because my ex-husband lives in your old apartment building or the building next to it, whatever, complex. And he goes walking late at night. That's what he does. And as he was walking, he hears something in uh, water, because there's a 
little pond there and a stream. And he says feet, he knows it's on two feet, and he hears it sloshing, sloshing, sloshing. And he said, this is what he told me when it was all fresh to him, that it threw something. Like he, it threw a, a stone or a stick or something. It threw it, and it scared him. Then you know how you do. This happened, but then you talk yourself out of it. Well, that didn't really happen. Well, sure enough, he, he walked again, and it happened again. So he won't walk there at night. And he's a big old guy. You know, he's not scared of nothing, but he won't do it. Well, what was weird, I didn't even tell uh, James about this. And um, we're going out there to see him one evening and for whatever reason. And uh, James says, you know, I was out here fishing one day. And he says, I'm not coming back out here. He said it's when he was really young. And he got so scared because he could feel there was something there. And I don't know if he also said he heard something. But he felt, he it was just out of the blue. James says, I think there's like one of those lizard men out here. I really do. I think that there's something out here. And uh, wow. he didn't know anything about what Tony had told me. Because I forgot to tell him, and it's like, oh my God, that is so bizarre. And then we were telling you, and then you enlightened us on the fact that you've been hearing all grades of stuff out there and just decided it was, you know, uh, critters, which it could have been. But um, I don't think they threw anything at you because you had the good sense not to go out there at three o'clock in the morning. I did one time, but um, but nothing happened then. But yeah, this is right. Uh, this is near the Catawba River, right on the banks of the Catawba. Fran Noel, you say you remember the movie Shazam. I think that's the one they say didn't have them. Google it and see. Because you know what I found about this Mandela thingy and their false memories? Sometimes I get to thinking about it and it starts getting confusing. And then it's kind of like I lose the memory of it. It's almost like something in my brain starts remembering it the way I'm supposed to. And by the way, I heard one of the twice in my life a uh, obituary of some famous person. I saw you know, like Dan Rather say this guy had died or whatever. And then later, how surprised am I when I see in the paper this guy's doing a movie or something? This happened twice. I have heard of famous people dying that did not die. I don't know. Go figure. Well, you always have your phone right there. I saw something about Sally Field. Did she die? No, no. Okay. She's just wanting to do a movie, I think. Okay. I thought, oh, my gosh. I, no, I no, she just, she just fighting for a role in the movie. <laughs> okay, see, this, she's got her phone right here, and this CNN news break came up. It's something about Sally Field, and I'm over there like I'm off to a flame. And I, I have on. it on because I have a kid in school, and you never know. what the, so They will message you sometimes. Okay, something that I've been noticing uh, over the last couple of weeks, and you sent me some notes that showed that other people. Go ahead. Shaquille O'Neal is not not who is she no no it is not shaquille o'neal that was shazam that might be that that shaquille o'neal and shazam that may be a whole nother thing that's a whole nother thing that probably was, does exist i cannot think of this guy's name it's sinbad. Be so, what they were saying sinbad like but yeah it's sinbad all oh, right okay see miss angela gets confused because i live in the clouds and in a far off world that You're others are not privy to shit. Why is my refrigerator? See, just one time I'd like to make it not have to get up. I'm and sorry. My refrigerator just decided to open refrigerator itself. door. It just is, that's weird. That was weird. And that's probably the lady from upstairs. See, so we cover all things on like metaphysical much. matters. We have all kinds of interesting things happen. All right. Uh, it's Sinbad, honey, not Shazam. Shaquille O'Neal probably was Shazam. I think you're right. But no, this is Sinbad the Sailor. It was a long time ago. Back in the 80s. Probably when 90s. you were a a baby and um it didn't happen just google send bad mandela effect and see what you get do that okay now go ahead okay um you sent me a couple of messages about people talking about seeing repeating digits and just and you were talking about how some different numbers have different vibrations and again i continue to see the repeating digits like you know when you look at a digital clock 11 11 333 9 11 all the freaking time what's up well, again, I, there's two things. First of all, I think when you see uh, those things, um, I think it's like guideposts. Like you're going down I-40, you know you're on I-40, but maybe you forget you're on I-40, or maybe you forget that your that your uh, thing, your exit's coming up, or maybe the universe wants to give you a chance to go on I-26 a while. Okay, so you got guideposts, and I think even if you're not ready to change, sometimes you need to kind of make sure you're still where you want to be. So I think a lot of times when you see these repeating numbers and whatnot, and some people will see the same numbers their entire life, that maybe your guide's saying, okay, do a gut check. Now I've told you that before, but then um, actually it's um, Bianca, Blanca, Blanca, <laughs> Shannon, who uh, 
talked about each thing has each number maybe means something too. So first of all, if you're seeing the same number over and you have your whole life, that's probably a number that's specific to you and it's your specific guidepost. Okay. But yes, everything exists has a vibration, including numbers. So I think that yes, sometimes these numbers like uh, have a certain vibration and you can look it up. What does this number mean spiritually mean and see, just Google it because you know, they all have pretty much a number that is firm and, been decided ancient times this is what this means like seven for example is the number of completion uh four is the number you often associate with uh, maybe authority eight is a money number one would be a leadership number two a partnership number three a new beginning number uh a four again uh taken uh, being a uh taken forward action a five would be freedom spiritual looking uh breaking down fences number six would be a relationship number seven would be uh, resolve an inner conflict, especially maybe work related, but an inner conflict resolution number eight would be again a money and or work number, also a very uh, special number of a number of infinity uh, of completion, and nine would be uh, uh, the number of stepping back, teaching, learning, seeking dreams, interpreting dreams, a dream number, a completion number, and um, zero. Uh, I don't even know what to say about that, but seven and 10, I think were maybe like considered to be maybe kind of uh, holy numbers maybe, but the Bible, for example, is full of numbers that um, are significant. Like I said, for example, the number seven, you got the seven days of creation and et cetera. So a lot of people that enjoy uh, numerology and numbers can maybe look into all that. And cause I'm not the expert on none of that. I just know what I feel and what little bits I've read, you know, I find it very interesting. And I do think that, like I said, everything vibrates and it's got its own vibration. And yes, you do need to do all that. Okay. We have clarification. This just in from the newsroom. Sinbad did Shazam. Shaq did Kazam. Okay. Did you look up Sinbad and Mandela effect Blanca? Look it up and see what you get. Because if it's saying now that he did, I'm going to be very angry <laughs> because I know what I read. Yeah, you know, we were talking about um, timelines, mm -hmm. and that kind of ties back into that. And sometimes I see things in the news that I think are um, indications that we have shifted for well, the good. Wait, wait, wait. Go. I am not talking about Shaq O'Neal at all, Blanca. It's somebody else. Never mind. Do not look that up. Look up Mandela Effect movie. Comedian, okay, because this, this is getting on my nerves. Now. This episode of Metaphysical Matters will now be known as the Shaquille O'Neal edition. Who was not in it at all? By the way, I love him though. He is so huge. Have you ever seen? I mean, with a, I mean, he just. He was on an aquarium show I like to watch. He's getting an aquarium. And the guys that Wait, wait there's a show about people who are getting aquariums. <laughs> yeah, amazing <laughs> aquariums. <laughs> amazing aquariums okay it's a good show if you like oh fish and i like God. fish they're not just somebody hauling in your 10 gallon aquarium kill me it's like these fantastical things okay and um and they are they are fantastical things anyway he got one and they made it look like a truck like a truck um what do you call it a big rig coming out of a wall that's what it looks like must be nice to have that kind of dough I'm bitter today about that. But anyway, that's another thing. Another set. Of I got something happy to say. Yeah. What is it? Other than your bitter jealousy mm -hmm. about Shaqu Shaquille O'Neal's and his aquarium. aquarium. Okay. Sometimes I was big. Is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> anyway, go ahead. Sometimes I, I see things that I think are really good signs that we've made a good shift. And here's something that caught my attention this week. Hammerhead sharks have made an absolutely miraculous comeback. It's Nobody awesome. can, the scientists cannot explain why their numbers have increased so much. They were down to the so hundreds crazy. and now they're back. I think the, the most accurate count they think they have is about 25,000, which is what they were a couple hundred years ago. I would love to see more of that. I would love that to see more of that. Yeah. I, to me, that feels significant in a good way. Yeah. I hope it is. I love to, I love to hear something like that. Um, okay. Another question you sent me this week. I think this might have come from um, Blanca. It's a good one. How to tell when you're in your house and you hear strange noises, bumping, knocking, tapping, whatever, how to tell the difference between something that's paranormal and something that's just got a reasonable explanation. 
I don't, I'm not sure how to answer that. Ask me that again now. Here's what you text. Okay, we're going to the mysterious text now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> how to tell if knocks slash bumps, et cetera, in home are paranormal or scientific? Okay, I think, first of all, who says paranormal is not scientific? Just because Good we point. lack the science to, Good point. to uh, adequ adequately explain, evidently I'm having a stroke now because I can't say words, what something is doesn't mean that it, you know this i hate when people say this is unexplainable therefore it's, it's not unexplainable it's just not explainable yet but i think it just uh takes trial and error you know i think you can investigate you know what they say when the uh, most obvious thing isn't there then what remains is the the answer that's the sherlock holmes quote it was terrible terribly done but you know you get my drift mm -hmm. if if you in if Logical stuff, don't explain it. Whatever is the illogical thing that remains has to be what it is. So you you research it, and there you go. You hear something knock, you go answer the door. There ain't nothing there. There ain't nothing could have been there. It's not possible. Then you probably got a, a ghost, ghosty saying, hey. And, you know, you've got the power, as I said before, to assign angels. And when, But when people get wound up, like you got adolescent in the home, number one. Or you got something like uh, an emotional upset going on, and you got everybody's got psychic bills. They don't care who you are. It's just some's got a whole lot, and some's got just a little bit. You got somebody maybe that's you know uh, pretty much in tune with stuff. It will it just that in and of itself will create a vibration which can stir stuff up. Okay, even in a calm place, you could put me anywhere. That place will be haunted within a week. I'm certain of it. <laughs> You draw a crowd. I do. And it's just ridiculous. I don't even care anymore. It just, I don't even care. It's just what it is, what it is. But yeah, I think these things are everywhere. And I think you just do it by the power of elimination. Man, that took a lot of words to say that. I need we, an interpreter. <laughs> That's what I'm supposed to be doing. Next. Okay. And I, I apologize for all that shuffling of papers while you were talking. That probably didn't help. You were bored and it hurt my feelings. <laughs> so, I just had something else I wanted to get to and I had it stuck up under the, all the rest of the stuff and I lost it for a minute. Um, and it's about astrology, but I thought it would be interesting to just to share this. By the way, here's another good resource for y'all if you're interested. There's a website called spiritlibrary.com. Spiritlibrary.com. It's a very low key thing. It's been up for forever and a day and it's a lot of astrology, just energy forecast, that kind of thing. Um, anyway, I find it to be very helpful. But I just wanted to read a little bit about the time that we're in right now. Uh, December starts off with the end of a 12-year cycle. As Jupiter moves from Sagittarius into Capricorn, where it will be joined, joined by numerous other planets over the course of the month to prepare for the January 2020 event. Evidently, that's cosmically going to be very significant. So think about what you were doing 12 years ago in 2007 that can get an energy refresh now did you begin something that needs a reboot or needs to move into a different direction have you put in enough effort and are now ready to let it go because it's run out of energy so that's something we could be thinking about also the theme of this month uh looking at the astrology is all about memories their power energy and how they participate in our reality every memory has an energy that becomes part of our energy field and acts as a filter for all of the energy we receive it's up to us whether we use that energy from our memories as either a limiter or an expander, which I think was pretty cool. Um, and also December's full moon on the 12th, which is, I guess, a week from today, will bring back the energy of Sagittarius, its opposite sign, uh, and the remnants of Jupiter's time there over the past 12 months. It will be a karmic full moon, so watch for old karmic cycles to rise up starting next week i just wanted to, to share that i don't know if you have any comments on that or i not. don't i think that was very interesting okay okay what's this fact check here you go somebody did sinbad play a genie in the 90s movie shazam i don't know because i'm thinking what i'm thinking of was in the 80s but maybe that's it and by the way in case you didn't we didn't comment on any of your comments it wasn't scrolling it was stuck and Is i have anything think, anything we need to go back and no talk about okay. no no she put a link on her, so we'll see how that goes. Okay. But it doesn't matter because, anyway, it was not that guy that, whatever. I, I can't even do this no more. Okay. Well, <laughs> maybe the guy's name was Sinbad. Oh, my God, Sinbad. Okay, that's maybe his name. See, I'm not in my right mind today. In case you people didn't notice, I am. 
out there in the zone because I just got through doing a session with somebody. And when I do a session with somebody, I am not my normal self. I am very ungrounded. I'm overly talkative. I'm scattered as all get out. There ain't nothing going to be done about it. If something but done about it, I'd get a real job and do right. But this is what I do. Well, you're in the perfect mindset then for what I thought we might do to wrap up things. If you're in the mood I, for it. I didn't talk about the vultures. <gasps> oh, yeah. Vultures. Vultures. Okay. I already posted. <laughs> Sorry. Feelings again. No, not really. Okay. Um, it I was that written down somewhere. Yesterday Sorry. was over on Nick's Creek Road right in front of Shannon's house, by the way. Yolanka, it was actually over your house, Shannon. Now that I think about it, directly over Shannon's house, I looked up and there was, I swear, at least 10 to 15 vultures. And you know, you see vultures that they're everywhere, or whatever, but they're usually new around here. And I know down in Raleigh, Johnny says they're everywhere, walking around on the ground like they just own the place. But there were, I mean, a bunch. And I pointed them out to James, okay? I pointed them out. And then we kept around, we're coming back, and we go by the church, and then over opposite street on down. I said, good gosh, James, look, there's 10 more, because I was trying to count them, you know, in little bunches, best I could. And there's at least that many more. And James says, well, they're coming for me. Not me, him. He's talking about himself. They're coming for him. And I said, well, you know, I don't know. Like the time so, the, 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 um, he thought that the hearse was chasing him. Oh, my God, that's another story of which, yeah, I'll tell you that if you we have time. But anyway, we're going on, and we see that. And then we go... Um, Stop at West Court, which is right down the road here. And I, he gets out. I get out to go in, and I look up, and I saw a gun right behind West Court. It's a bunch, but it's still a big bunch, and they were low enough to get my attention. And I'm thinking, well, that's crazy. And I would come home, and then uh, I go back out a couple hours later to get the kid. And Jim said, I know they're coming for me. They're getting closer. But anyway, I get in the car, go up to the top of the hill, and I swear, since I got top of the hill, there was about 10 to 15 more. I mean, a bunch. And I thought, well, so I texted him. I said, yeah, James, I think they're coming they just replied sigh you know but i think when something like that gets your attention whether it be vultures or just numbers or whatever as we've already said i think the universe may be speaking to you even if you're not consciously understanding what was being spoken okay even if it's not conscious i think you're being given something uh that is um to speak directly to your spirit and your spirit gets it. The universe wouldn't speak to you in a foreign language. Okay. So even while you may not consciously have this language, it is in here. It's in here. And when you need that information, when you need whatever that is, it'll be there. I do think that though, um, somebody had mentioned, uh, I'm sure. And told me that this is a sign of endings of an end of a transformation process. And I'm thinking, gosh, I've been cleaning all this stuff. I've been getting rid of, I've been closing out. I've been ending lots of things in my mind, um, ending phases. Uh, that's it. And I think the universe is telling me maybe there's more endings to come for me because it's time for that to happen, whatever that is. But I think that is, is to remind my spirit and, for James, it may be something else because obviously saw it too. But I kind of think it's for even though James thinks they're coming for him, I kind of think it since I'm the one that's seeing them and pointing them out, I kind of think it was um, directed at me uh, more so because I'm the one that saw it. He wouldn't even seen it. The fact that I pointed out to him says it is for him as well. And since we're a married couple, I don't think you can have something happen to one that doesn't happen to the other anyway. But anyway, I just think that when you have stuff like that show up in your life, to the point where you can't not notice it, the universe is probably speaking to you. And while you may not be able to say, I don't know what this means, just trust that your spirit knows and acknowledge it. I also sent you a text about water balloon. Oh yeah, wait a minute, I wrote that down somewhere. Um, actually the text that you said, said love is like a water malone. <laughs> I was speaking. <laughs> so I was confused for a few minutes. I have no idea where these things come to my brain. But, you know, I was just thinking about a water balloon, and if it's still wet, especially. And if you toss it to somebody, you know, and they grab it, it's really hard to get a hold of, right? And you have to kind of be very careful how you handle that. And I think that sometimes we get these gifts, you know, uh, that come to us, and it would be simple if we would just maybe hold out our hand and let this happen. Let this fall. Let's just do this. But because it's slippery and because this is the main thing, we panic. Sometimes we're given a gift of love 
or maybe we're given a gift of psychic ability or a gift of um, whatever. And again, we're just we just get so freaked out by it that we let this thing that should be kind of easy to hold if we just be careful and take time and don't fight what is being given. We don't fight it. You just do this and just hold whatever gifts being sent to you. And sometimes people are so desperate to have a, a relationship, especially that grab hold, you know, they try so hard. You can break the whole thing open. You don't just drop it. You destroy it. You can pick it up. If you drop it maybe, but once you break it, all that stuff that was there is gone. So I think I was just thinking, you know, you know, look in your own life. Are you are you gently receiving what is being thrown at you, maybe, or given to you? Or are you grabbing it? Are you squeezing it so far out of shape that you don't even know what it was anymore? Or are you just taking it and enjoying the liveliness and the the thrill of whatever that is? That's all. That was my thought for today. That's cool. That's very. I cool. have in their thoughts sometimes. Okay. In closing, um, yeah, since you're in the zone. Do you have anything that you could, if you're going to do like a, just a quickie flashcard reading for, for the, for those of us who are gathered here today, uh, what would you tell us? Black and white. Things could be kind of getting black and white. Try to find the center and the balance so that you don't get consumed by one or the other. Find your gray. This one's supposed to say, find your gray. I know that's weird, but hey, you know, you get what you get. Okay, excellent. As, as the kindergarten t teacher used to say to Dylan, you get what you get and you don't pitch a fit. <laughs> okay, all right. Is that it? I believe that's it. We are uh, just, Karen had some great comments about um, talking about signs. You're talking about the, the vultures. She had uh, summer snakes I mean, all kinds of obvious or un unexpected places and ladybugs too um, that she thinks may be associated with her mom i do think that a lot of people associate cardinals and stuff with their past loved ones there's all kinds of things the thing is if you see something and it kind of makes you think i feel like that's this or i feel like that's that it probably is um and yeah i think a copper or a snake is a sign of outgrowing one's own skin you know it's like you're shedding that and that's why sometimes they'll feel very uncomfortable to a person when they're going through change uh literally sometimes people will itch they'll have her skin irritated but you know you go through this and it's you know like you're shedding all that was and while it's uncomfortable once you shed everything there that uh, you've outgrown spiritually mentally emotionally or whatever you got something nice and shiny it's nice and good and um yeah i think if you ever get like a cloudy ladybug slide and they do that and you feel this is my mom's spirit there's probably a reason that you're feeling that and now somebody's saying butterflies, they are obviously about transformation, you know, going from a ground creature that has to crawl on the ground to something that flies, it takes flight and does amazing things. Think about they start in a foreign country to go all that way generationally, you know, how do they know where to go? I mean, how does each generation know what leg of the journey it's on and how to get there? That is just, to me, the most amazing thing. But anyway, whatever it comes to your mind is probably coming to your mind for a reason. You don't need me. Although I hope you will continue to see me and I will tell you that you're wrong. And I'll tell you, <laughs> I'll tell you, maybe confirm to you what you're, what you're already thinking or not. We'll see. Um, and in the meantime, we're all going to look for our gray. Wait, wait, I'm calling the UFO people. <laughs> the UFO people is what they are known as now. Last time I did this, I said, I feel like they're going to do something from the east. And then like two weeks later, again, we saw that article where this mothership in Utah dropped some out. And they said they went east. I thought, that's it. Okay, so I'm going to pull them in again and say, I know you're over there at Mount Ida. So I'm hoping you'll let me get another picture. Let's do that. Let's see that. Okay. Oh, God, I just had this thought, like, what if they just hover over my house? It's like I so badly want that to happen, and I so badly do not and want that to them, happen. And one of them leans out the window and goes, order up. Oh, my God. <laughs> We're what here. If, I'm actually having a vision. I feel like they're sitting right over someone's house, and I'm not taking it back. Maybe it is mine. Maybe it's everybody's. Maybe they're just whatever. Well, anyway, have that. Don't be alarmed. Sleep well. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All Thank right. Thank you so much, and here we go to our shutdown. I'm going to go back to my reading. Yeah, you do that. I'll join you. And we'll see how it goes. One day I will end this thing. Right. Bye. Bye. Oh, come on. Just <laughs> once in a while.
we're not going in today. I guess it's metaphysical matters.